Oh, go for it, Karen. Uh, go ahead. Um, sorry, it's just really hard to keep that in mind here. I've kind of, I've kind of lost it. Um, the the, no, the third one, uh, you were going. Uh, so I mean, yes, I guess the other thing was that, as you said, you, you know, none of these masters and spiritual teachers are actually too keen to tell you what enlightenment is. Um, but the other side of it is, they can't anyway, can they? They can't encapsulate that in any kind of linguistic package. It, it doesn't reduce to words. I no, mean, just from my slight experience, it doesn't signifies. reduce to language. No, but you can give people signifiers. Like so, so the Zen Buddhists say you can't actually give anybody the moon, but you can point to it. So. The thing that you're talking about in in terms of time and space, really. The, so, the point of enlightenment is is a point of reaching a, a, a kind of singularity. So, in Hinduism, they call it a nada point, and it's really the point of expansion where everything comes from. Presumably, the whole universe and the Big Bang theory is it. It's really the, the Big Bang is that uh, point of singularity without dimensions. So, without the three dimensions of space and time, or they all compressed into one one point. So uh, enlightenment is being connected to that point, just 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 once even, just just to where the the world go, goes away or is collapsed into that one point. So it seems like you know. It's uh, nobody really knows <laughs> what, what what it is, but the, the you can see hints of it. Like for example, in cosmology and physics. So, if I say to you, like, okay, well, light takes eight minutes to come from the sun to the earth. You say, okay, well, that's eight minutes. It's kind of chugging along, you know, going through the solar system, and then the photons arrive here on Earth. Well, if you are light. If you are the photon of light or the wave of light or a packet of light, uh, it takes zero time. Basically, because of relativity, the, if the, there isn't any movement on the light. The light literally, if it could experience anything, which it can't because then it would have to have movement. But it, for, the photon itself is stationary according to itself. So it takes zero time, according to the light, to get from the sun to the earth. But here's the weird thing. It also accounts that there's zero space. Because of Lorentz time contraction, light itself would say, no, there's no distance between the sun and the earth. So then you say, well, what the fuck is the eight minutes and the vast distance of one parsec that is actually crossed? And you say, well, that's just kind of an expansion of that singularity. So our unfolding universe and our experience, Kairos uh, is the experience of it. Kronos is the kind of digital, uh, sidereal uh, kind of chopping of it. It's, it's the discrete measure of it. Um, yeah, it's, but I mean, it's, the, it's just the observation, isn't it? As soon yeah, the as you've got the observation, are that comes... The observations are like the analog. Yeah. They're kind of like the wave. Mm. And then uh, what our... Kronos is really our alien cortex. Our alien cortex is chopping it up and making it discrete and digital. It's actually, you know, based on our fingers of our right hand, I think. But it's basically... It's, it's slicing the time um, artificially. But... Our experience of time, basically the qualia, all our senses, what you, what, you know, if you get connected with taste and hearing and that a feeling of immersion in bodily experience, that's kairos and that's kind of analog. But the digital and the continuum, the analog expansion of that point is our lived experience. And what happens when you basically have a moment of enlightenment, they all just compress into this one point that basically has no time and no space. So, so you'll know it because you, you, you cannot tell how long you, you've been in that state. It could be a, a fraction of a second or it could be a thousand years. 
you, you'd never know. But you'll never be the same again. <laughs> it's um, almost like you yeah, go so this, uh, like in, in through a time cone. You go to a point yeah. of, sing, of of singularity, and then it expands. But it's a mirror image. It's like the whole world is flipped over. So that's so why this comes back to you. The, I, I keep on using the metaphor of flipping and all of that kind of thing because, and inversion and all that because it's basically it's it's priming you for that. Yeah, I mean, this is what is this is what's behind you saying that uh, it doesn't actually matter how much time humanity's got because between now and whenever is an eternity from from. Yeah. It, it's not it, if you're in Kairos, it doesn't matter whether it's tomorrow or at the end of the century. Um, you, you, yeah, you're you're outside can, of you, time. Yeah, who said it? Was it Blake? You said uh, if you can see infinity in an hour, and um, or yeah, if if you could see infinity, the in universe an hour, in a grain of sand or something. Or yeah, yeah I, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's also yeah, that's right. there, there, there are various peak moments that they call the normally like um, I think William James. I uh, wrote a lot about peak moments and stuff. I don't know that he ever had one. <laughs> I think he did. But, um, yeah, he was kind of obsessed by peak moments. But uh, there's a poem by Rupert Brooke called Dining Room Tea where he, he talks about a peak moment like that. And it's basically he, it's a beautiful poem where it's, he's kind of in an English parlor having tea, and it's almost a perfect moment. And while the hostess is pouring the tea, it just stops in mid flow and uh, just just captures that moment and just kind of gets completely lost in that so um, that that moment of just pouring the tea so uh, yeah it's it's worth looking at rupert brooks dining room tea but yeah it's the problem is you don't just st stumble on those moments. You, you, your problem about how much can you force this is it's a very difficult question because you can't force it at all, but you have to, the only way they come is with masses of effort, <laughs> which is an oxymoron. Yeah, that, that's it. That, 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 that's it. Yeah. That's, I mean, you come to that point. Um, yeah. But it, you never get sense... a moment like Rupert Brooks standing room tea while while you right. go backwards and forwards to the office and you spend most of your time in right. you know in front of the television and you use a buds you know knock back a few buds to relax and talk shit all day and watch the news and just you you, yeah. you are running out your life with uh, with Kronos. Oh, can I say something? Yeah, measuring yeah. your life with, with coffee spoons, you know? Uh, all right. Yes, I know that. Can I make it say something that might be not quite relevant? Is that, I mean, um, you put up a huge amount of material on Reddit, which keeps your dutiful, dutiful followers, I think, excessively occupied on, on, on digital. Uh, uh, now, I know you've got another reason for doing that. You're trying to crack a few heads. If, if people... I'm trying to put pressure on you, but yeah, I'm terribly disappointed that I think you're the only one. The real gems that I come up with, <laughs> nobody likes. Like like that, the one the one that I put there like, with uh, Kairos and Kronos, those two murals of, of yeah. basically... It's, it's there's so much in it, and I think it's, it's not. not that you it's not that. It's not that you. It's not that nobody. Like, you don't have the time <laughs> to, to, to. Sometimes I have to go back to to look at things because there's too much. So it, it, it there are things you know, but they, it, too much not in quantity, but in depth and things to take in and and to look up and to just reflect on. And so I'm I'm sometimes some weeks behind. <laughs> Well, maybe anybody who watches this video, we, that's a very good thing, I think, as an exercise in reflection. If you're talking about how do you actually reflect on that, is, is go to and see that post where you can see Kairos. Um, and Kairos is holding up a scale, you know, a weighing scale. And he's got his finger on one of the dishes. <laughs> 
He's cheating. He's putting his thumb on the scale. Here, the I, problem with that. I put it, wait, just hold on one. I, I put it right next to the, the, the priests uh, that are judging the Pharaoh against uh, the Pharaoh's heart against a feather, which was the trial that the Pharaoh had to face after death. Now, what you must remember is that the priests in, uh, in ancient Egypt, they were a conniving bunch of shits, right? They they ruled the they ruled the kingdom and they had the pharaoh in their pocket and the way they kept him in his pocket is with all this bullshit. So they chiseled all this shit on the walls and had all these funeral texts and they were the way it was their way of keeping the king the pharaoh in control by basically filling his head full of shit about what happened to you after death and all of this mythology. But they were so cunning those bastards that. Uh, the stupider pharaohs, uh, well, the pharaohs got stupider and stupider, I think, but they eventually got to the point where they had uh, Anubis and stuff um, that they would get a priest. You can go and see in Egypt, they have a little hole where the priest can get under the statue and then say, Eric, who approaches Pharaoh Anubis? And then the pharaoh would come trembling to this fucking statue and the priest would you know, bullshit him. And that's how the priests get control. So all of this is, is about control. And basically, it's the same control like the deep state, the surveillance state. It's those priests. It's the same guys. It's their ancestors that are still fucking bullshitting us. We're the pharaoh. And so, so um, yeah, yeah. Those, those priests, right, they, 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 they try to hold the, uh, the pharaoh to account. But it's very devious because we're all crooks, right? Basically, if you do a complete accounting, we don't ex deserve to exist. And so basically what Kairos is doing by putting his thumb on and he's saying like, he cheats. <laughs> he's saying like, yeah, my existence is illegitimate, but fuck you. <laughs> so he tips the scales to say that, yeah, it all works out so that his existence is justified. But you see what the priests and the IRS and the, the the priest, the police, the IRS, the state, all these tyrants and stuff, they're trying to force an accounting. That's what the surveillance state is all about. It's trying to force an accounting. And so, you know, the accounting can't keep up with you in real time, but it basically, it keeps you a slave by basically craw crawling towards you to give you an accounting because basically everybody knows, your alien cortex knows in its heart of hearts, it cannot survive a full audit. So if you if you ever got full audit by the universe, you would vaporize. <laughs> and so basically, that's the the thing. If you ever got full judgment, you would fail. And that's why the priests are such cunts because they're setting the pharaoh up to fail with that thing, with that test. It's a test that no one can pass. There's nobody nobody uh, is is fully square with the universe. If you had to, if you did a full accounting for everything you've cost the universe and everything you gave back, uh, you would come out slightly in deficit. And so basically, we we cannot afford to have a full accounting. And so that's why we lie. We we have, our culture is a tissue of lies. We all lie to each other to try and stop us accounting for each other. And so we justify our existence with lies. Lies. Now, what, what those priests were doing was saying, like, when you die, then you will be forced to, to account for your existence as Pharaoh, knowing full well that you can't. So they're a bunch of shits. But the way Kairos gets out of it is puts his thumb on the thing, so then they fucked. It, it's, a, it's a trope that comes up again and again. It's, a, it's, it's, it's the thing in Monty Python, where the Monty Python and the Holy Grail, where he comes to the bridge and you have the troll. It's, the, it's a very old idea of the gatekeeper and the troll and then basically the gatekeeper in monty python if you remember the scene the fantastic one who says, who says answer these questions three <laughs> the guy says, says like um he answers ridiculously easy questions and the guy goes across and then oh that's easy he says what is the wing speed of velocity of of, of a of a sparrow. I mean, uh, how does it go? What is the wind speed velocity of a, of a sparrow? And a guy goes, African or European? And the troll goes, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so the priests are blown away. If you, if you challenge the priest on their game, they're blown away. 
So it's that that old game is the you know it's the same in the Forbidden Palace all the Unix um, rule secretly because they're crooks and they're always faking the uh, emperor out, always pretending they're honest brokers doing the the emperor's uh, duty and stuff, and they're not. They're keeping the emperor like a pet. And they 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 cheating him, but they do it because they they do the astrology and they do you know all this kind of Confucian justice and the scales must balance and they they're filling the emperor's head full of shit, and then basically you know if the emperor ever says oh fuck this, I'm gonna hold the scales and let's see how you do on this test, and then it's like oh fuck <laughs> we're exposed ah oh, damn it our game's been exposed. So it's the same with rebellion against authority and against the government and the state. Is saying, no, fuck you, you're holding me to account. Like, fuck you. You tell me. Tell me what the IRS. We're going to audit the IRS. We're going to audit the fucking tyrants. They can't pass the fucking test. No one can pass it. They just got us bamboozled that we must have justice. And so fuck social justice. Fuck. You're not going to get justice in, in the apocalypse. So fuck it. You know, don't even try to get justice. Just say fuck justice. <laughs> um, That's your liberation. Fuck we've justice. got about fuck another justice. Fuck justice. They've inculcated in you. You must achieve justice. It must be fair. Yeah. There's no fairness. There's no justice. Fuck fairness and justice. That's what Kairos is saying. Just take it. Just take it. <laughs> you deserve your life. Take it. That's that's what they don't want you to do. <laughs> Well, um, that's <laughs> should we end it like it, on only that? Need, it, it only needs about another three hours to unpack that, I guess. Um, <laughs> oh, look at that exactly. Religion is child abuse, exactly. Well, see, but religion is justice, right? You see, what, what, what religion teaches us is it must be fair that they. they not only is religion child abuse, education is child abuse because what they teach kids is you must be fair, and basically you you, you basically they they're doing the the priest trick to little kids in school, and and they're setting them up uh, for for a fall. And you see what their religion does is saying it's the Solomon esque thing, which says you know the two women bring you know this argument about the baby. And then basically King Solomon comes and, you know, splits the baby or does the judgment. And then everybody says, oh, thank goodness, you know, that's sorted. And oh, isn't that wise Solomon? And they say, no, it's a trick. Solomon doesn't give a shit about you or the baby. He just sets himself up as the honest broker so he can stay king. <laughs> so, yeah. Here, yeah. um, it's a trick. It's probably a bit late now, but could we, can we go into this back back a few minutes where you were talking about the deficit um, that you're you're left with um, after the accounting, and um, I'm just wondering: is that deficit the kind of energy, so to speak, that that is giving you life? Is the price of life that bit no, of deficit? Nobody knows what life is. So, so it all accounts to zero. So basically, if you look at Maxwell's equations, basically the permittivity and the permeability of, of the universe accounts to zero. So basically, what, what the entire universe is, is a fluctuation that the universe hasn't finished accounting for. <laughs> so basically, the, the universe is trying to account for every freaking molecule and say, you know, it is out of balance. And it's trying to restore that balance, but it's being, it seems to be being defeated by the rate of expansion. The, the rate of change is such that the accounting, in other words, light, which says nothing is happening. Uh, you know, there's no space, there's no time. And basically space and time is outrunning light in a way. So basically light, so the universe, says there's a fluctuation and it's basically, you know, electromagnetism. So you have an electric effect. It has a transverse uh, magnetic effect, but you can't have one without the other. If you have a magnet, what Maxwell's equation says, if you have a magnetic effect, it will induce an electrical effect to oppose it. It basically, it's, it's like pushing a ball underwater. It's basically the, the, the electric effect, basically a movement in space, 
uh, will induce a magnetic effect. And the magnetic effect will induce a corresponding, like an elastic band, a, a tensor that basically uh, counteracts that magnetic effect. So, so basically, the universe is, has, is out of balance because it's saying, like, you know, curl B is, you know, opposed to, to the electromagnetic, um, in the, uh, the, the electric field. Is basically, they, they, they are, they account to zero if they can be accounted for. And that's the beauty of Maxwell's equations is it says everything yields null, zero. Now, what the fuck is this then? <laughs> well, well, it must all, when all accounting is said and done, it must all account to zero. It must all be done on a neutral plane. But not quite, because there was something rather than nothing. And that's the amazing thing. No one knows how to answer that. But there's something wrong with Maxwell's equations, because they're saying, well, they're not zero. There is something rather than nothing. Yeah, but it's not a, it's not a thing. Um, so yeah, but when, when, the, it all account, when the universe is finished and all the accounting goes to zero and everything boils off in like infrared and all the black holes boil off with Hawking yeah. radiation and there's just a, a field of photons, um, then, you know, like we said, light has no dimensions and there can't be any time. So that in effect is back to the singularity. And so all accounting is over and you can say, well, then there was nothing. You say, well, yeah, but... What the fuck is this? <laughs> what the fuck are we doing now? We're in the middle of nothing. <laughs> it's but it, but it still seems to be it still seems to be the bias of science to to even the singularity to kind of be implying that there's always mass or something there rather than no thing at all. Um, uh, you know, I mean, my, my tendency. Yeah, but that's but but as you're saying, okay, they can say that there's nothing, but obviously there needed to be something. But obviously, well, it, it's 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 well, um, they say that they're fields, right? So they they say that they're fields, and then the fields kind of get folded up on themselves, and those make particles. But yeah. The, yeah. it makes no sense because a field can't just exist in the abstract. The field has to exist. In some kind of plane, it needs space, time, or some kind of dimension to exist in. But so, what's wrong with going back to the more ancient, like I guess possibly Hindu thing, maybe where, where what, what what is the primary pre-existing thing is just consciousness, which doesn't have any of those properties. It, yeah, it, consciousness, it's, or, it's, consciousness or light. So it's it's like the yeah. Nada of Hindu. Basically, it's just a point, right? And, and yeah. so it's kind of an expansion of that point. So it's exemplified in the Sanskrit alphabet. So the Sanskrit alphabet starts with a point, which is the nada sound. It means the void, nothing. It's Maxwell's zero. And then basically the first sound is R. So basically, uh, so R is just a primal um, wave, just a primal resonance. Yeah. So, so then they say that that primal re resonance then resolves into three. So it's a i un, i ouch hayorat lan chabang gadadash chabagadadash chabagadadash chabaka kapacha hupa kai kapacha ta ah hull. Anyway, they they say the whole universe expands exactly like the Sanskrit alphabet. Yeah. yeah. And so the the uh, it, it was the metaphor for for basically doing an expansion of Maxwell's equations and really the the um, the, the, the energy field of, of um, modern physics. Yeah, but it, basically everything is just a fluctuation on on nothing, <laughs> and physics is relent relentlessly uh, cons conserving in quantities, so all qu quantities. I kind of um, because you've got to go. I mean, an ordinary person has got to. It's a bit of a handful to 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 get your brain around all the Maxwell stuff and all this rather 
esoteric scientific understanding of it and all the rest of it. And, uh, you know, you have mentioned before a couple of times this sort of mythological take on things. But I often wonder that could you just look at it as imagine that you were God and you're just sitting there in the void and you were going to create the universe and you started to create it and thought, oh, God, this is a pain in the ass. I've got to create millions of tonnes of bloody hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, but I've got to go right through the fucking periodic table and create all this stuff. It's <laughs> going to be easier if I just create the illusion that it's there, a convincing dream that it's there, that I'm, that's yeah. still create. There's still no stuff. Uh, all I got to do, in other words, I'm in a way I'm creating this uh, um, virtual reality. Um, and, yes. and that's what we're in. That's what we're in. You know, I all the stuff that we've been in with your dreams. <laughs> yeah, so, so they call it Leela. The, it's basically a dream. And then that's what realization is, is you, you have this very solipsistic experience where you are God and the whole universe is something you dreamt up. So the, you know, the, all these uh, cosmologists and scientists, they talk about, well, this is maybe a simulation. You say, well, okay, geek. Yeah, it's a simulation on a computer. But the computer is you. You generating. Yeah, that, the that's the big difference. There's nothing outside yeah. of it. That their, yeah. their simulation is yeah. kind of got this evil thing because there's yeah. always this kind of science fiction film thing is that they're out there behind your god wall, so to speak. Yeah, there's manipulating no, there's you no god wall there. Yeah. So, so it's kind yeah. of like in the Matrix, you can find a big supercomputer where the Matrix runs. And you say, well, well, hang on, I'm outside the computer then. Yes, and inside. So basically, the, it's generating itself. And that's the bit that our physics just cannot get to. And our climatologists can't get to. That's why they do feedback so badly, <laughs> and that's why we have yeah. that's why we have uh, Darwin because basically Darwin is a linear explanation for a non-linear process. And I tried my best to explain it in a few videos, but I don't think anybody watched that. No, in fact, uh, I suppose it's too late now. But uh, another time, uh, um, I want to look at that particular part where you uh, talked about life apparently defying the second law of thermodynamics but then when you look at it it's not really it's just slowing down that and playing with that energy as it goes down the gurgler and delaying it for so long that it looks like it looks like the energy is not being used up that it's not being dissipated in fact it is but the dna is just playing a bit of a game with it along the way that's very extended i, I don't know that was my understanding of it is that what you meant uh, almost, but the, the the energy is constant. All everything in the universe is yeah, but what, constant. Yeah, but what you seem to be saying is that the DNA played with that energy as it was dissipating to such an exquisite degree that it appeared oh, yeah. that maybe it wasn't dissipating. You know. Yeah, it, it's uh, trying to reach equilibrium, but it's re it's prematurely optimized. So basically, what we are is a kind of complication. It's like a funny thing happened to me on the way to complete entropy, and this is what you get. <laughs> yeah, that, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it's yeah. it's kind of like a knot. In uh, It's a convoluted knot that basically, I think, comes from those uh, three processes, basically, you know, attractors and repellers, um, uh, filters, and focal points. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. Well, there's a. Maybe that's enough. I've had enough for tonight. <laughs> we don't going to say we didn't get it. Nothing happened to these poor bloody chimps. We didn't get anywhere. <laughs> um, uh, that's what we've right. been talking we'll about to... all <laughs> we, we have, yeah. It's, it's basically these poor chimps are in this cage of their own projection. Hmm? So they're like projectors caught in their own cinema. Hmm. Well, that was a nice talk today. Wow, thanks so much. <laughs> we had a little can tour. I, can, can, I say, can I say one thing? You don't get your money's worth on, on XR Med, eh? you got a little tour of the universe there. Yeah. I, I have uh, something to add regarding physics and uh, 
Schrodinger, there's a theory called Schrodinger's cat. And they uh-huh. say that there's a cat. It's in a box and it's dead and alive at the same time. So I don't know how they. Well, that, that was Schrodinger's interpretation. So that's, that's um, yeah, not, not all physicists like that. And they, they've elaborated a lot, <laughs> a lot since, since Schrodinger. But that, that's the, the essence of the uncertainty principle. Yeah, so that's, it, it was actually, Schrodinger's cat was a thought experiment to try and say that he's got to be wrong. But in the end, it turned out, well, uh, it turned out that, that nobody could find a, a good explanation for why he was wrong. And so it stood until Bell's inequality. And Bell's inequality said, yeah, uh, he's right. But uh, if you're interested in that, I'll go into why Bell's inequality is actually wrong. <laughs> but, yeah. It's very contentious. Basically, the essence of quantum theory is Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, and that the Schrodinger's cat was was an effort to try and say no. It's a thought experiment to say no. This has got to be bullshit, but it didn't fit with the maths and the experimentation. So they kind of left with this. What the hell do we do with Schrodinger's cat? <laughs> no one knows. Yeah. Anyway, we're, yeah, we can do physics and cosmology one of these times. <laughs> It all helps. All Is right. there time? <laughs> well, yeah, we've got we've got and Kairos time, right? Okay, thank you. I mean, uh, Kronos time. Now we're screwed. <laughs> Kairos time, plenty time. Yes, there's <laughs> always plenty of time with Kairos. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that's cool, everybody. We'd better round it off there. I think this is one of the longest yeah. ones you've ever done. Yeah. All yeah. right. Bunch of gas bags we are. <laughs> All <laughs> right. I wonder yeah. what anybody who watches this is going to think. They're like, what the <laughs> hell have these people been smoking? <laughs> yes, what and the bots want? will never delete it. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. One good thing about it. <laughs> Here, it comes back, <clears throat> comes back to what you were saying regarding that uh, scales of the heart and the feather as, as I think you you were complaining that, that nobody seems to look at it or nobody upvotes it but some of those more profound things that you put up it's I think it's not that nobody pays attention to it it's just that there's nothing much they can say so there's no <laughs> comments under it yeah. um, you, you know the other a lot of the and other things are more big, topical interrogation point you know just what no, is, is yeah that? But no, nobody you know, asked. Nobody asked. Like, hey, why is Karas like got his finger on the, the scale? Nobody asked. Yeah, maybe there wasn't enough keys. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. yeah, clues. You know, put it in Greek. <laughs> yeah. Really yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh well, okay. okay. Well, anyway, it was fun, guys. I, uh... That was good fun. Yeah. All right. Okay, take care. Uh, thanks for that. Thanks. Thanks, all everyone. Right. Thank I'll you. see you later. Glad to see you all. Take care. And don't get the lurgy. Don't get the <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Have a nice week.